Welcome to Light Tonight. I'm Christian Heath. Joining me are Diana Gillian, Verna McLoon, and Jimmy Danudin. Let's go. Climax, the annual event held by the Dutch entertainment enterprise Q-Dance, is famous for amazing production qualities and this year it did not disappoint. There is no one person to credit for the lighting, it's a creative team effort. This year's theme was noise controllers, the source code of creation. The stage was a shaman's head, the rings around it represented the mind and the subconscious. Throughout the crowd were suspended visualizations of DNA. The show began with the main rig covered up and the suspended DNA strands moving simply until the main structure is then revealed and the DNA strands go bonkers. Room lighting was Clay Packy Sharpies and Martin Quantum Washes. Stage lighting was Roby points and quantum washers controlled by two Grand MA2 full size. Video was controlled by an MA wing with a pair of Catalyst V5 running exact mapping files. Lighting tribes gather each fall for LDI which often runs in Vegas. Last November saw around 300 exhibitors and healthy numbers for the two and a half day trade show. Light Tonight saw evolution, not revolution, with lighter and brighter the theme. Solid state lighting is rolling out everywhere with product cycles shrinking. Less exciting products like auditorium LED lighting are proliferating with almost every conventional lamp now having an LED replacement. The spread of control options has never been greater, with Martin rolling out the M-Touch controller for around a thousand US dollars. LDI returns to Vegas next October. Next cab of the rank, Pro Light and Sound at Frankfurt in April. Dave Byers first worked with Blur 24 years ago and is now touring the world with lead singer Damon Albarn. Kat Strom caught up with him on the road for a chat. So Dave, over your 24 years, how has the lighting for Blur evolved? Well, um, everything. Everything that they do is quite different anyway from whether it's for one blood album to another. So it's, I suppose it's actually become a lot more subtle now because before it was, uh, you know, big pieces of set and massive big looks, all the rest of it. But now it's, it's more um, being subtle and accentuating the music with um, a little less, a little less attack, I suppose. So you don't get a chance to be mental anymore. Oh, you do for certain songs, but um, with a much, a much more limited palette. Yeah. And again, over that time, how has lighting changed for the better? Um, I suppose it's the technology has now become a lot more reliable, yeah. because you think when I started out, everything was just. Um, all the automotive side of it was just coming into use, so now there's a, there's a whole lot more reliability there. And also uh, control as well, you can, you've got much more controllability mm. over everything before it was just a bit, you, you were totally limited mm. by, you know, what your desk could do, what the light themselves could do. Yeah. But does it compromise your stage lighting when a TV crew come in? Absolutely, I've had it before with, um, and the one I can remember in particular is with the, uh, we did David Cassidy <laughs> reaction there. But, um, and, and what it was is I made the mistake of sort of letting go of control of a lot of that. And it was, it, it was funny because he likes to end his set on a blackout. And because there's lots of extra film lights in there that they were pretty much on all the time. But he did this this thing where he kind of bows down like this and holds it until the blackout. 
And of course, these some guys shouted at them, out, 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 <laughs> and he's like this <laughs> for about two minutes before I eventually managed to run over and kick, <laughs> kick them to switch the lights off. The US military have perfected the death ray, bringing new focus to large laser systems. This 30 kilowatt monster can silently and invisibly track and kill a moving target, as our vision shows. Now that we have the technology, we are waiting for a scalable solution for stage use, which will assist humanity by removing threats to our sanity. Peak lumens have arrived as lighting designers specify the latest, brightest fixtures like the Roby BMFL. Super Sharpie by Clay Packy could be reclassified as a weapon since it will burn holes in soft objects like people. In theatre, the lights go out at the start so the audience's eyes can adjust. Cameras need less light, so why so bright? The answer seems to be because they can. SGM boss Peter Johansson chose an unusual way to highlight the IP65 rating for his G-spot at LDI. He jumped into the water with the light. Earlier in Aarhus, Peter told Light Tonight he has a patent to remove hydrogen from within a fixture. It's a device who extracts hydrogen from the fixture. Without hydrogen inside, humidity cannot happen. Without humidity, you have no corrosion. And with no corrosion, your electronics last as long as the LEDs. So without this unit, you will not be able to have your electronics live as long as the LEDs. SGM recently released the G-Spot, which is IP65 rated to operate in virtually any condition. Crucially, SGM say the G-Spot does not ingest dust. With an LED engine, the device is claimed to be virtually maintenance-free. Clay Packy are now an Osram company. Light Tonight visited Bergamo in Italy and spoke to Clay Packy chief Pio Nahum. I think that the acquisition of Clay Packy by Osram is uh, very important for Clay Packy. And uh, it's important for our future, but it is also something that is, uh, we welcome. We welcome for, the, for our future growth and we welcome also for, because of the of the the two culture of Klepaki and Osram are very similar, so the two companies will integrate very well together. Uh, one of the things where Osram is is very strong is is in, with their legal department. And you know, for one of our main concerns today are the copy makers in China, the counterfeit companies, and we will definitely fight again against this company because they are the one that are they are the, our main concern today. Uh, all of our products uh, are, are being copied. Of course, fighting against uh, these competitors is not the only way to develop your business. You know, we, we, we need to do something else. And uh, we know very well that the only way to, to, to fight is to run, 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 create more and more innovation. And one of the ways to defend yourself is to create products that are more and more difficult to copy, which means complexity. Here at Light Tonight, we scour the world for your infotainment. Terry Quattro is our new muse. Now you can get successful guy lighting at normal guy prices. The GE Link light bulb lasts for over 22 years and it only costs $14.97. That's 66 cents a year. I spend that on moist towelettes every 13 seconds. It's too moist. This bulb is also so easy to install, you can do it while painting. You simply twist in and turn on. 
And thanks to a Wink hub that you plug into your wall socket, you can control your lighting with the Wink app on your smartphone. For an embarrassingly small amount of money, you can kiss your horribly lit, non-successful life goodbye. G-Spot is now available in a unique framing version, the G-Profile, providing the best framing for your designs. Super Sharpie. Light beam pushed to the nth degree. Mythos, a spotlight which is already legend. Stormy, more than a strobe, a real Tempest. Get ready to meet them. They are the projectors. Projection mapping, lasers, lighting, sound and FX synchronize seamlessly for Pulse, the heartbeat of Hong Kong created by the SpinFX group for the Hong Kong Tourism Board. The curved shape of the Hong Kong Cultural Center makes for a tricky canvas, with the projections also having to compete against the vibrant and illuminated backdrop that is the Hong Kong skyline. While this adds to the excitement, it also adds to the challenge of breaking the content through. of eight scenes are seamlessly intertwined to provide the audience with an ever-evolving visual and musical journey. The building ripples and transforms into stunning patterns, mesmerizing 3D shapes created by Kulox Pandora's box, as well as Barco and Panasonic projectors swirl around the building. The result is a show that captures the spirit and energy of the lively city that never stops. Martin recently launched the Rush MH5. Jimmy Denudin takes a look. Now the Rush range of fixtures is designed to be affordable and satisfy a market that covers everything from houses of worship through to nightclubs and even retail environments. There are five moving heads in the Rush range uh, and originally we saw the MH1, 2 and 3 released and they are profile, wash and beam lights respectively. Then a little later on we saw the MH4 which was a different size of beam fixture and now the latest addition to the line is this which is the Rush MH5. It's a profile but a different size and with a slightly different feature set from the MH1. The MH5 is driven by a 75 watt white LED light source. If we want colour we've got a choice of two different colour wheels including a UV and two colour temperature correction filters within those wheels. We also have two gobo wheels in the fixtures, one of them is rotatable, the other one is static. Add to that a three facet prism and motorized zoom and we've got what's a fairly comprehensive little fixture in what is a very light package at about 9 kilos. Control options include 3 and 5 pin XLR DMX which uses 16 channels but if your application doesn't require a dedicated lighting operator or controller, you can just throw the thing into sound to light mode, which indeed is what it starts up in as a default. And that will allow it to just generate an automatic light show based on what it hears happening around it. Rush MH5 from Harman Martin. Made in Dagenham has just opened at London's Adelphi Theatre, where the challenge for the lighting designer John Clark was to convey the dynamic movement and energy of the car factory whilst also delivering the human scale of smaller domestic scenes in a musical context. Conceptually, the lighting design deliberately employs a reduced colour palette, contrasting cold arc sources from the industrial environment with thick, warm tungsten sources to provide a more human context. 
Saturated color is then used in a very considered and deliberate way to deliver heightened musical moments and also invoke a sense of the period in which the piece is set. Mac Viper Wash DX are interspaced with Swoboda light curtains which provide the main tungsten contrast as well as two moving trusses on Kinesis hoist containing tightly packed very light VL500s. Front of house, ETC Revolutions and Martin TW1s do much of the front field work for the multitude of different spaces created by the set. Martin Mac auras are hidden in the pit and behind the proscenium with showline SL Nitro C strokes delivering factory welding effects and showline SL strips custom mounted to the top of all scenic airfix panels. The rest of the ring comprises scrolled park hands, 4K HMI Fresnels and very light VL1000 ASS. Roby BMFL is bright, possibly the brightest fixture in its class. It has image stabilization during motion, which reduces truss shaking. It has good dimming and CMY color mixing. Roby says it's the lightest fixture in its class. The BMFL has a 1700 watt lamp. We put one through its paces at LDI in November. The VDO Phoenix 6 LED video panels from Harman Martin are intended for the rental market with 6mm pitch and weather rated. They are ready to go out of the box with no additional frame necessary. The panels are easy to service from behind and calibrated to match other Martin video products. Further products in the family are anticipated. ETC offer a family of venue LED for house lights and replacement of existing fixtures including backstage lights. They've worked hard on dimming and claim to have a linear result. The GDS system can be wireless controlled without the need for control cable. The GDS arc lamp is intended for chandeliers and sconce lights. A new range of blue backstage lamps is here as well. At Light Tonight, we love how the ugly and mundane can be transformed by light. The Ulyanic shipyard in Pula, Croatia, has been revitalized at night by lighting designer Dean Skira, creating a new tourist attraction. Philips Color Kinetics LED floodlights are installed around each of the eight cranes to fully illuminate them. The four large cranes are illuminated by 48 color-rich power core fixtures and the four small cranes are lit by 28 for a total of 76 fixtures. An iPlayer 3 DMX lighting controller manages the lighting effects that gleam across the exterior of the enormous cranes. The Hong Kong based artist has just completed a sellout stadium tour of China, complete with her own customized ghost bands from Glow Motion Technologies. The lighting, designed by Mandy Lights, incorporated 15,000 ghost bands, which were distributed to the audience members on the floor of the stadium at each show. The other 20,000 people in the stadium could look down and see the effects generated. The ghost band created huge effects and managed to immerse the entire audience into the show. The ghost band lighting featured a mixture of proximity effects, such as the ghost bands taking their cues from other ghost bands surrounding them, whilst the other content was bitmapped to complement what is happening on stage.
for those time you need some LED with your smoke or some smoke with your LED, Jimmy has found the Antari Z1520. Let's have a closer look. Now the Z1520 from Antari combines some 30 years of heritage making foggers with some new technology in the form of LED engines. The Z1520 is first and foremost a fogger and it's a pretty high output unit for its size. Uh, I can't actually find any supporting documentation to say that it's okay but I've tested it in both horizontal and vertical orientations and it doesn't seem to have a problem running in either of those. Indeed there is also this little cage to secure the fog juice reservoir into the thing to stop it tipping out. So I think it's probably safe to say that it's fine to run vertically. Um, in addition to the fogger, obviously we've got these LED engines around the nozzle. We've got eight red, seven green, and seven blue modules, and they're pretty tightly collimated. So when you hit the juice, you get LED illumination as well. Now, control options are DMX or this cool little included key fob remote. You can disable that if you want. And uh, with the four buttons on the remote, or indeed the DMX options, you can change what kind of color illumination you want on the fog. You can also choose whether or not you want the lights to remain on after the fog stops or turn off at the same time. Now output wise, this thing pushes a lot of output a long way in a very short period of time. It does have a limited duty cycle. You can't turn the thing on and run it all day, but it's not the kind of effect that you'd probably use for that. I would see this very much at home, scattered around the front edge of the stage, and I think if you use several units at once, you get a really good impact. And, and I think this would be a nice alternative to something like a CO2 cannon with a little bit less of the associated difficulties uh, with permits required and so on. You just get your smoke isolation in your venue and you're good to go. So you go, Z1520 from Antari, old school meets new technology. Mod Trust is cool but their mascot Lucy is cooler. Here she is at LDI, all three kilos of her. We do like a dog story here at Light Tonight. Indeed, we have our own. Meet Nina Simone. While in Vegas, Light Tonight visited the Usher Tour at the MGM Garden Arena. Executing the design by Baz Halpin was lighting director Eric Wade. Execution mistakes. Well, most of the time it's not lighting the band, not lighting everybody. You know, at the end of the day, you want to see what's going on. I, you know, that's from my experience. <laughs> but, you know, and like last year, just like I was telling you, with Maroon 5, the biggest complaint what they had at the time was the band couldn't be seen. All they were seeing was Adam. So it was like, why are we even here? So that was the number one thing I came in to fix from the guy that lost the job. So I took over the show. We went in and in one week with Joel Young and I, we reprogrammed the whole show, rehung it, put new fixtures on it, changed the whole show, and lit the band. Number one rule of thumb, light the band, light the money. So, um, you know, give yourself a big opening and a big close and make sure everybody can see what's going on on stage. You know, there's moments in the show where you don't, obviously, you want the nice silhouette looks and whatnot, but those are planned looks, you know. Um, we were talking about Prince. <laughs> That's a different, whole different, you know, that's a whole different thing. Prince, um, we, I was doing that with Peter Morse years ago. We did Musicology. And Peter and I just lit the first song to the, I mean, it was beautiful. We had, it was huge. It looked great. We thought it looked great. Prince came in and went, no, 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 that's all wrong. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. We're like, okay, so <laughs> what do you want? He goes, well, where's the 5K? A 5K for now. He wanted a 5K for now. Since when on what show do you ever carry around a 5K for now? <laughs> so we send out. Peter goes and gets a 5K for now. And Prince asks for it. And he goes, I want a red gel in it. And put it right in front of the kip drum. And we're like, OK. And he goes, and all I want you to do for the first song is hit it with a beat. Boom, 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 boom. That's all I want you to do. As soon as you hear the music start. Turned on the PA, turned out the lights, hit the, hit the Fresnel with a kick drum. It looked freaking incredible. <laughs> it, was, it was perfect. He stood right in front of it, got the big shadow, and, you know, he taught us something. So the extreme, though, with him is that he doesn't like spots on him. He doesn't want to be seen. He doesn't want the band to be seen. So you're, you, got your, you got your hands tied a little bit with him. 
But uh, but again, it's his creative idea and not ours at that point. So, you know, you're doing what he wants, not what you want to do, which in essence is what you want to do for your artist. Usher wants everybody to be seen. Um, Grace and Usher run the whole thing here and Grace, she's very detailed with knowing that the, it's a band. She doesn't want it to just be all about Usher. She wants the band to have their moments. And I mean, we have Aaron Spears, you know, one of the best drummers in the business. He's amazing, incredible drummer. Um, so seeing these musicians is an awesome thing because there's some great musicians here. So we make sure we can see it. She was bad from the start. Said I knew it. Yes, I knew it didn't do it. Said I knew she didn't did it. Uh, so bad. She was bad. So bad. She was bad. So bad. Uh, Should've listened to my friends. Uh, Should've listened to my mama. Uh, Should've listened so to my mama. Bad. Yeah. So bad. So bad. She was bad. Yeah. 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 So me. So me. So me. So me. So me. Well, that's all for now. Light Tonight returns in March. We'll see you then.